Hi everyone. Hi oh, everyone. God, sorry, we were a little bit late with this. We were incredibly moved by that quite brilliant documentary. It was just we were just saying, weren't we? Mm. Every single point that this family so wanted to make, I think yeah. they made so beautifully. Yeah, totally. It just broke my heart. All of it broke my heart. But my um, God, Will Young is an extraordinary man, isn't he? I thought I thought it was really, really important as well that. It, you know, they they had no shame or fear about flagging up their privileged background, yeah. upbringing, because I think it's really important. I think so many people just assume that, that yeah, that mental if you're health, mental. if you're wealthy, that somehow yeah. these things don't hit you, they don't affect yeah. you, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I also like the fact that it was very unsensational. It as you it just it was a family story, and yeah. the thing is. That could happen to any family anywhere. And his openness and his, oh God, he was just so charm, mm. nat just the natural charm in him. Mm. But so many really important points there to be made as well, you know. Trauma cannot be ignored. No. That Those boys had a real trauma in the school that they went to and and the pain of the mum and dad. Well, I thought the father said everything father just in the way he stood with his back heart. to us up by the sink. And then his inability or his struggle to kind of, you know, it's that thing where as a parent, well, not just as a parent, if I think about my own addiction journey, you do go searching for where was the point? Where did it start? Where were things fine? And at what point did they not go fine? And how much before the alcohol was not fine, not fine, if you know what I mean. Um, so I thought that was very, and I, th I don't know, I, I, and that's a weird thing to say. I really, really thought it was important, the way in which, if you think about it, he didn't cry once in the documentary. He didn't cry once. And in fact, that to end virtually on a comment of him saying, I hit him and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. But uh, for me, he, he, oh my God. In terms he of just, tough love, if he just, he just Yeah, he just soothed so many things in me as mm. well, just personally, because there is shame when somebody kills himself. There is guilt. There is shame. There is guilt when somebody's struggling with addiction, somebody that you love or mm. even yourself. And he wants to... He wants to challenge all those. He wants to turn around the way that we think about these things. Mm. And I think he would have touched so many people. There'll be people across the country in bits after watching that. Yeah. And the bit with the daughter, with the young the daughter, girl. Who, the daughter. Who, who is sending yeah. out little packs of needle and thread and fabric mm. for families of addicts to stitch in something of their feelings. I said to you afterwards, didn't I? You should be so proud of yourself you're 18 years sober. Mm. Because that could have been one of your daughters. Well, did you see one Because of you're not the same person when you drink. And this is the awful thing for families, isn't it? Or if you love somebody that drinks. And when people say, oh, the true character comes out of somebody when they're drunk, that is it's not true. No, it's it is not true. The pained, the pained and agonised yeah. personality of the person comes out when they're yeah. drunk. The, the, the self-damaging personality comes out that actually damages others. I thought it was really intriguing that when he met the NHS woman, she said there are five places in the country, five institutions in the country on the NHS that people can go to. And then that statistic... How can there be that kind of arrogant neglect of a disease that mm. causes so much other disease? She said it will impact five other people. Really? An alcoholic and addict it will impact a whole lot more than five people. Mm. And also, all, if you just think of it from a monetary, monetary perspective, I mean, I remember when you were in rehab, they were saying... You know, it's so often it's the partner of the addict that will actually get ill yeah. because of the stress and yeah. because of the suppression and all of that. So yeah. just the knock on impact financially on the NHS of also, other things that people need to be treated for. Why also, not help these people who are medicating, self-medicating a mental health issue with alcohol? Why not help them? But also I thought it was really telling that they said 1.6 million people alcohol dependent. Come on. Way come on, come on, come on, come on. Known. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's so that's known, probably people that have admitted Known it. and admitted. Yeah. But it's like, if you, ask, and if you ask an alcoholic how much they drink in an average week, 
you have to take what they answer and pretty much double it because they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna be honest with you. And likewise, as a nation, you know, 1.6 million. And then they said, mm -hmm. for every one alcoholic, there's five people surrounding the alcoholic for whom the alcohol disturbs, disrupts, and destroys their lives. I, again, you know, for some people, that's even more than five people. You know, if you're in a, if you're in a big family with groups of friends. Um, I just thought, it, I thought it was just, I thought it was a really clever and subtle film yeah. that knocked aside all the preconceptions that we have. So yeah, he, he could have, they could afford really expensive rehab. And I'd have thought that for so many you. people, who can't afford that sort of rehab. It's one of those documentaries you can watch and go, well, just because you've got the money and just because you can get to these places, it doesn't mean it's going to work. Well, like that wonderful woman said, I thought I was going to come here and they were going to fix me and then yeah. I realised it was the group and myself that had to fix me. And I absolutely knew Will was thinking, we didn't bring him to this one. Mm. Yeah, he felt that guilt, didn't he? I mean... He yeah, he, he said did, it, didn't he? yeah. And also, you know, that thing where he talked very slowly and calmly about he so knew he couldn't do any more for his brother and he pushed him out i mean i was pushed out you know when you th this there's this idea that for people who don't understand addiction that by pushing them out it's hard to do at that point because you know you're having to kind of make peace with yourself that the worst possible circumstance could happen and you have to somehow say to yourself that i am not responsible for this even though you could be the reason for pushing them out, that could be the reason for them to hit their rock bottom. It's a gamble. He couldn't do it. It's a gamble. He, he did the right thing. Yeah, but if there was any chance for his brother, it was yeah. at that point that he did yeah. that, yeah. if there was any chance. And that's the terrible lottery of, of I addiction. I love this from Elliot Gonzalez. It was such an understated, understated, powerful tribute to a brother, a privilege to allow us to watch. I think Entirely that's agree. beautifully put. I feel privileged to have watched for that family to have shared. Mm. It won't have been easy mm. at all. Mm. But I suppose so often when you lose somebody, you, you want to make some sense of it. Mm. You want to make some meaning to it. Mm. And he will have touched people today. And I'm sure he's going to go further. I'm sure we'll see some kind of... Because he's very smart, isn't he? And I he? didn't realise it was so recent yeah. either. I mean, I, I, I've been banging on to everyone. I saw Will Young in Gardner's... Uh, Gardener's World about three years ago and he, he was talking about his mental health diagnosis and it makes you realise again doesn't it for all of the sense that you have of these characters these public figures you've got no idea what's going on behind the scenes that was kind of you know the fact that he went on stage and his brother yeah, had just, just slashed his wrist yeah, and he was bleeding off stage his father immediately vomiting from the, yeah, from the sight of the blood and, and also, like he said, every night a phone went, he would fear that that was the moment that he was going to... Katie, yeah. oh Katie, I'm struggling oh, Katie. after the death of my son in February. Mark knows all about my Jack. Mm. We do. I'm basically either in bed at his grave or pissed. I don't know what else to do. I'm broken. Katie. Oh, sweetheart. I mean, the thing is, I really hope you're getting some grief counselling. And if you feel like your drinking's, like, numbing you you know, more than maybe you would like it to, you know, talk to your doctor, mm. go to an AA meeting, go to, there is help out there. Maybe you're not ready yet. It's still so soon after losing Jack, but mm. there, there, there is light, there is light. I mean, it, like he said, he couldn't talk for the first year. There's no way he could have said the things that he said t tonight mm. in this documentary a year ago. Mm. Um, oh. Sending so you all our love, Katie. Uh, where's Lee's comment? Sorry, Lee, Lee Doran. Uh, where are you? Here we go. It was an amazing documentary. I couldn't afford to go into the Priory for two months. My company paid for it. I was one of the lucky ones. Wow. Um, Kim Lakides, I had the pleasure of meeting Rupert on two occasions. He was a lovely, charming man. Mm, you could see that. Yeah. He was just so, I mean, I was broken when Will Young talked about when he and his brother were in that horrendous boarding school. Oh, I know. And they would go to the toilets and kiss each other and say, I wish I was at home. Can I just say, I think boarding school is one of the cruelest things you can do to a child. Sorry. I know, I know it's probably... But you see, they would look at him and say he's a wealthy family. The parents clearly love yeah, them. Yeah, they clearly love them, yeah. But yeah. it's tradition. Yeah. His parents probably went to boarding school at six, yeah. seven, eight, nine, whatever. Doesn't matter age. what class you're in, it's raw in yeah. it, it's it's We've got to stop thinking that people with money and big houses don't have, you know, pain. They do. And also the other point that I thought was finally really interesting from the NHS woman was the way in which she kind of suggested that the lack of provision in the NHS 
was itself about the stigma, a societal stigma around addiction in the way that she said it, there was around and cancer, cancer 50, years, 50 years, ago. years ago. I thought that was a really compelling Shame detail. Shame and guilt and stigma. Yeah. And let's not forget, it's the only drug you have to apologise for not partaking in. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm I can't so drink sorry. Can't have a drink. Oh no, I'm so sorry. And you'd pretend I've got to run tomorrow, or I've got to get up at six. I'm so sorry. I can't and it's have funny a drink. because why do we have to apologise? If I had a pound drink? for every single time someone said to me, "What would happen if you had a drink now?" I think they think like I'm going to become a six-headed hydra, and you know, sort of. Th what would happen is I would have a brilliant night that night with you guys, brilliant, and for the rest of the year, I would be on a slow increasingly faster descent into hell, taking all of my it family be, with it me. It wouldn't be slow. No, but I might control it for about two or three days and then it would just go. It it's would just go. For you, for some people, it's pure poison. Mm. It's poison for everybody, but, you know, some people are able to manage it better, but for you, it's poison. Mm. So it's a really so calm, really meaningful and really tender watch and, and really honest, really honest and really measured in a way that wasn't unemotional i thought he i thought he, it was a great tribute to his brother as well it really was yeah oh guys it was so sad and obviously that's all part of mental health awareness yeah. week so yeah. really good that he's talked about it big hugs and yeah. love to all of you and anyone that might have been struggling or felt triggered by that by that tonight mm. but i think if Thank you brought you, up Gabrielle. emotions like he said sit with them it's okay to feel sad it's okay and also that other thing that he said that i think really caught you was not turning away from it. Yeah. That was the really tough. That really got me at the end when he said, you know, the grief thing is about, it, he finds he can cope with it by not completely turning away from it. And I thought that was really counterintuitive. Some people want thing. you to shut down very quickly with grief because mm. they don't know how to deal with you. But if you need to still keep openly, <laughs> if you need to be an open wound for as long as you do, just, just, just do what's right for you. Yeah, There's absolutely. too many rules and regulations on how grief is supposed to. Exactly. Do it this way or that way. Yeah. Anyway, sleep well, guys. Lots of love. Bye.